four. Top East Wars versus NIP. Rookie, and as we come on in, is in danger of falling down to Tien, who is looking for that kill. It's 1 0 right now to NIP. Uh, first blood looking like it went the way of Photic on the Ziggs. Looking like a much better look in than the other side of Mako. Looks for an all in here down for Jackie Love, who is. Going to be forced away by a satchel charge. Mako continuing to step on forwards, though, proving really problematic. But Jaw manages to body block a lot of Jackie's damage. And we've got ourselves some drafts that's probably worth talking yeah. about. Double AD carries so, on both sides, and then the double AP jumpers. So those that are just tuning in now or are just watching everything here, Jackie's going to get himself a root onto top plane. We'll see whether it leads to anything. No, it doesn't. We had ourselves a bit of an overlap between the first and the second series. Luckily, uh, BLG stomps away so hard in that game three that it meant that we only missed the first five minutes in the draft of this game. So we're coming in late into the second venue here, NIP in Shenzhen, uh, and in front of the home crowd. If they lose here today, I'm pretty sure they are going to be locked out of, um, they might just be about locked out of that, um, out of out of the, the, the initial qualification into playoffs as close to it. The bottom two teams in the Ascension group um, will find themselves having to fight through a last chance qualify for a chance to playoffs. That is tip, that is the position which NIP might find themselves in at zero and five. They will feel like they were stolen. Uh, they were stolen a series um, yeah. uh, against FPX. They were so, so close to winning that one it just the over. other day. It was completely over except for it the victory wasn't. lap. Uh, and then the victory lap had a stumble on it. And then IP uh, lost out that series. And they find themselves now in this situation. And it does feel like if Rookie in particular isn't in a position to just solo win a game, NIP look a bit lost, honestly. Aki and Shanji not having the greatest time of it. Fotik not being... Uh, at the top end of our AD carry talent pool, even if he's been uh, more than serviceable, has really proven problematic to NIP, particularly in the mid games where they just haven't felt like a coordinated unit. Yeah, so on the other side, top esports, of course, they've um, they've lost a couple of series recently, and that was been unexpected. Lost yeah. to lost to BLG. Mm -hmm. That one was BLG playing some of the best League of Legends we have seen the play all. No, it was the best League of Legends we've seen the play all summer. Um, including, uh, pro well, I mean, MSI was a different beast, but I think that uh, Top Esports were really, really slapped about by BLG. It was a great series. Go back and watch it. Very, very high level. Perhaps one of the best we'll see in the regular season anywhere across the world. Um, but then they lost against LNG, an LNG array team, which have also come mm. to play very recently. They, of course, lost against FPX somehow, because teams do that against FPX somehow in the late game, despite them late game not necessarily players. being a top team. But um, at Top Esports, eating two series which they would not have expected, to lose this would be a way for them to stabilize and to come back on form hopefully recover some of their mental fortitude as well um that's always been a worry with players like tn as well where sometimes when i think the schedule was very rough for them and i think those losses did not help him in his confidence he had four mvps back to back in that group stage and he struggled to return to quite that level of form um same with mako i think that mako his form took a dip. He's been looking better, though, in their recent series. And now with Top Esports versus NIP. I still obviously favor Top Esports coming in as favorites because NIP have been really lacking in form. But we'll have to see now with a 1,000 gold lead for NIP. It's looking pretty good in the early game. Yeah, that feels an all right old lead to be working with. And again, if they can get towards a couple early dragons and the like, they'll be feeling pretty happy this game. They've got themselves very scary wombo combos again. The Zyra plus the Rakan and then... Culling and the Zigzalt coming down on top, which should be pretty scary. But you know, for top esports, you've got yourself the poke game between the Ezreal, the Rockets from Corky, the Nidalee Spears. If you can set up with the Orn and the Leona in front, it'd be uh, pretty scary for whoever gets CC'd in place. So, um, this kind of. So, when we talk about NIP, we talk very often about how hard it is for this team to draft. Chandy is maybe going to get shut down here. Has ult, has flash. Can he escape the Orn ult? No, he can't. He pops that ult through that animation. Or oh, gets a huge amount of damage onto him. He's got himself a Dominus and a Dream. It's a decent call. The Meek to buy some space, but, uh,. Flash on forward should surely see the death of Shanji, who's healing up pretty well. Gets a good W. That's not bad, but cannot finish what he started. Not quite. Shanji on the Renekton, which he's uh, done a lot of work with in the past. Just overextends, and he's on the weak side, pushing out against Tien's Nidalee, which is uh, one of those Nidalees which has the Nidalee pass. You have to be certainly, you have to be a certain level of player to play this champion, and Tien has matched that margin for Summer. He's done a lot of work here now in this early game to make sure that uh, Shanji doesn't start to explode this gold lead quite as much as he could have done. 369 on the Orn, which he, he's made a career out of this in the past. He's uh, mm. one of the best tank players in the world, was one of the best carries in the world, became one of the best, maybe even the best tank player in the world. He's done it all at this point. Going back to the Orn for his team in this one, it's a bit of a flex bit between him and Mako, who's yeah. also one of the best Orn players in the world. He's ridiculously good he, at the combos. He, he has solo killed so many people um, <laughs> with that champion. Like, he's got to be at near the top of the um, LPL solo kill boards, actually, ironically. 
just because of the amount of Orn solo kills he's managed to pick up, yeah, it's he, pretty wild. He, he solo killed Elk, he solo killed APA. Did he solo kill Faker? I can't remember that one. I but feel I... like he, he really got some fun ones. He's, he's, he's had some good ones, folks. But all the same, 369 has been playing this uh, for absolutely yonks. And we'll have to see now whether he can impact the team fights on this pick. He is the god of peel. He always saves that extra little bit of CC to peel for his teammates. He does have the flash, but he doesn't have the ult for this one. Tian going to go towards the grubs. Here come the double teleports. They all want to be here, grubs. Going to be started up. It would be uh, getting towards the four slash five mark if they can just secure a couple more. That's the fourth. The rest of NIP looking to come and contest, but the Mega Inferno Bomb does nothing at all. It's just walked out from, and he's looking a little bit safari-like at the minute. The turnaround's not bad. The Solar Flare lands on Aki. Is eviscerated too much photosynthesis. Cream flashes over the wall. Rookie can't get it range for the auto as Cream responds in place. Rookie gets one back. He'll try and get some more damage as they do come on through. Rookie gets that double. Still alive, still doing well as a charge back ensures another kill. And actually, in the end, NIP, despite it looking dicey at the beginning of that fight, claim a few kills and at least get another grab. Oh, Rookie is done with this game. He wants to take off and go into the horizon. 2-0 and 1 now with a magnificent team fight. Can't quite get the kill on Cream, but gets a couple more for himself. And top esports, they go towards those grubs that they don't have that on up. If they had that, maybe things would be so different. Jackalow overstayed in that top side. Has Flash, and maybe has the E as well. He does. Draw, can he catch him? He has that ult. That's the grand entrance afterwards. <laughs> we'll still be able to get out to safety. Jackie, though, forced to burn the Flash. Could be punished later on. And honestly, I thought after that Mega Inferno Bomb missed, and Aki get bl got blown up, I think, well, they've not got the damage, right? And Cream doesn't die as Rookie goes over the wall, yeah. he's behind, and it still works out. I think not having the Forge, the Call of the Forge God is is uh, is really big. Aki gets caught out. Aki been the subject of a lot of criticism in this summer, to the point where Lian has been added to the roster for an IP. There's a funny story about that, which we'll have to tell us if you come to the replay. But Rookie, he, he's just completely off the races. He, he, he guns out one carry, takes down a load of kills, and just zones off the rest of it. Great team fight from him. If he can continue to have that, Rookie will um, really be a threat now beyond this point. Shanji, he should be safe. But um, yes, yeah, so folks, Lian has been added to the NIP roster. Now, Aki's been under a lot of uh, criticism. I understand them looking for a new jungler. Lian cannot be played right now by NIP. This is the thing which you wouldn't hear on the mainstream because Lian was banned for two series for humping a plushie on his stream. What? So, so he is not available for NIP to play. Um, yeah, that's where you get that from the co-stream. That's which esports. Uh, yeah, that's that's the that is the most normal LPL moment of all time. So, what, what um, is it with LPL pros and doing? Yeah, look, Wild Weird stuff. shit yeah. on, so, on stream. Look, I'm, look, I believe Oliad also got fined in the past for vaping on stage. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, this dude is like, weirdly just like, I don't know whether he's a bad boy or whether oh. he's just, I, I don't know whether he's like one of those bad boy archetypes or just, oh. or just bad at following rules just for some reason. Anyway, so in the future, we might see them playing uh, towards the end, but he can't for now. Because of that, you, you've heard it here. Do with that information as you want. I, uh, I won't name names, but I knew a pro player who nearly got kicked out of a bar because he walked behind the bar oh, and yeah. tried to serve himself a drink. Yeah. Oh man, that's 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 probably one of those things. You know, in a couple of years when it's less relevant oh. and like it is enough size fast, that's the point where you can start pulling out those stories. Fudik forced to flash away. Uh, another player that has been uh, subject to a lot of criticism is Fotic. I will say, Fotic, I. NIP are a team that needs specific scenarios. Draw is going in, will probably go out beyond this point. Uh, that's gonna be a heavy trade Ow. as Mako stands his ground. But NIP, realistically, they do need Photic on something which is not a traditional ADC. You want them something that can um, stand at a bit longer range. Something like that Zig, something like the Ezreal. Uh, the Senna also were a, a famous pick for him. The Ziggs does fit into that wheelhouse, so that's nice for NIP. But Shanju also has a bit of a, a narrow champion pool as well. And mm -hmm. of course, Aki has also really, really struggled going yeah, towards yes. the AP jungle. This is, Positioning as a mage, as a jungler, is not something you attack with any other style of champion. No. Uh, with stuff like the Karthus, the the Brand, the Zyra, you don't have to position with that on like a Wukong or Lee Sin or Shin Sao, but even stuff like the Lilia plays differently towards that. So NIP, um, it has been hard for them to find their own winning scenario. They haven't been able to reconstruct their spring form where it was all about rookie on roaming AP mid champions like the Ari and the Talia. I, I was wondering whether... Um, they would just try and say, well, screw it, we'll go back to that style anyway, we look better at it. And in some ways, I'm, I'm kind of sad that they haven't gone towards yeah. that more, rather than try and 
play towards a broken version of this meta because their players are not comfortable here. Now, I think maybe there is just this issue with NIP where the champions they want um, were really nerfed from Spring or like the meta around it because ADC mid laners are so, so powerful. And Rookie is a good AD mid player. I don't mind him on the core gear. I don't mind him on the Lucian, but I think just the team needs a different archetype and they've really, really struggled. Whereas top esports, they have shown that versatility. They're happy playing whatever. And it means that the meta shift hasn't really impacted them much. I'm just surprised Aki hasn't gone back towards things like the Szechuani, because that's what he was phenomenal at. Szechuani's perfectly meta right now. I, I assume it must be banned against them quite a lot or taken away, but... It's been first picked yeah. by them so much. Oh, Tian also played yeah, by them, of course. Uh, and th th that, that tells you quite a lot, really, that Aki doesn't have the Wukong, the Vise, the Szechuani's to consistently go towards in the same yeah. way. And it's been problematic. And Shanji's never getting Rumble. Yeah, no, no one's getting Rumble, so that's one of his big, big, uh, big picks down. And because Cassante does lose out to some stuff in the top lane right now, it's not even like you can always Cassante your way through a game. He can still sometimes give it a good try, but it's not always been like that. Top Esports, they've just been way more comfortable with the meta. Mm -hmm. um, they've they've had a whole bunch of champions they've been great at. And, you know, right now, it's not that... It's not, it is an even game, but one team has, you know, you've got the double tiers, you've got the, the double tier spikes coming through there, 369, gonna get go. a teleport, here they go. Rookie's in danger, still has a flash in a relentless pursuit to maybe get out to safety, turns around on the TM pretty heavily, but there is the searing charge, and Cream is there, and Rookie says, look, I'm dead to rights, I'll try and get something back, but it's not happening. Oh yes, uh, how could we forget that uh, before the Cassante copy pasta, there was the Orn one, who is the, like, the, the tank, mage, warrior, paladin, assassin, uh, sorcerer. He's multiclassed. He, he has... Th it's, that's multiclassing. For for when for when wizards run out of spell slots, they bring a shotgun. <laughs> that's multiclassing. I cast point. fist. I class I class buckshot. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Um, jokes about D and D aside, I've been playing Baldur's Gate again recently. It's been great. Yeah, I've heard yeah. that. I, I've been hearing you um, bemoan the fact that uh, Shadowheart keeps crit failing. Cream uh, is trying to see me, if actually, but never mind. Is uh, Cream? Gonna be just about safe. Flashes on out of the Mega Inferno Bomb, and Shanji now in a 1v3. Needs to be a little afraid as the Solar Flare comes on down and gets out to safety. Photic Cast Bomb! It doesn't quite hit, though. He ends up getting a critical <laughs> miss on that one. Set. He's an artificer, all right. That's the one him and Heimerdinger are wrapping The Bramble back is out of the jungle. But cream, uh... <laughs> Cream does live there. He's he has been um, like focused down quite heavily by NIP in, in that how um, around the the grub swipe rookie tried to assassinate him now in the bot lane as well. You you always try and take that corky out of the picture if at all possible. Not quite able to do that uh, so far. Uh, all the same, NIP uh, within touching distance of that gold. They were further ahead, uh, so letting gold that go of that thousand gold lead is not going to help them particularly much. And the big problem I see coming later into the game is that their tank frontline is just not fit for purpose against the enemies because Orn is one of the tankiest champions in the game. Leona, much more tanky than the Rakan, to the point where um, a lot of people consider Alistair the tankiest support in the game. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that he is tanky when he gets the perfect ultimate, which is not always easy to do because sometimes no. you pop your ultimate at half HP, the duration's all over the place. I think that Leona is the tankiest support in the game by and large. And when you have someone so like Mako, when, yeah. when you have someone like Mako on that, it means that the Orn and the Leona are going to be a better frontline at some point in this game than NIP. And if it becomes about frontline to frontline with front to back, and the Ziggs doesn't immediately zone out a carry, I think Top Esports are very, very happy to okay. walk over this game. Six Herald Charge comes through, which means and if we do uh, reclaim themselves a bit of gold. More than that, the gold is still pretty even. It's been a relatively even game on the whole. We'll see whether they can pull it out as Shanji on this side lane has been almost able to escape a couple ganks and has almost set up a couple kills, but almost isn't good enough. And we've seen Renekton's that fall behind end up in tricky positions. 400 gold ahead of an on this point of the game, especially as the upgrades happen as I speak about it. It isn't what we like to see. Photic sat in the mid lane here. Uh, this will be a lot easier of a game to uh, wave clear and be that artillery piece compared to the last game where it was just rough from life, never really got to play the game. Aki and Shanji just hanging around, teleport into the jungle from Jackie Love, picks up a red buff, that's the reason he was there, it was a uh, Farm Alarm TP, even if her exile has been changed <laughs> many years ago now. Man, that was one of the worst versions of that ultimate cream. It was so meant to be the assassin. Nope, it is farming all the time. Cream stuck under the turret. He's yeah. left alone. Teleport's coming in. How quick did they get here? Yeah. Inferno Bomb is solid. They get the kill for the turn around. Looking pretty huge. The teleport's gone flying on through. Aki is in danger. Call the forge goal. Could be across the Jackie Love. Not quite here, but Aki falls. Turn around ensures it is a one for two in favor of NIP. Jackie now in dangerous. Rookie decides to stand and deliver. A relentless pursuit gets him right into 
close combat with Jackie Love and will pull away for now. Health bars low nearly everywhere you look. Yeah, World Championship teammates Jackie Love and Rookie trying to out-DPS each other in that brief scuffle. Neither go down, but the IG carries uh, will walk away a little bit with bloodied lips after that point. Rookie is doing his very best to try and get out the damage. And top esports, they're slow to these side lane plays. Uh, I'm surprised at that. They have been very solid in their macro throughout most of summer, but they've taken a bit of a slip in their timings. You should be here early with your jungle support. They're not quite there in time, and the difference in seconds makes all the difference. Draw manages to find that kill, um, that combo onto Cream. Cream does not get to commit any damage. The tower does more damage than him in this play. And while you do see 369 and Orn, um, 369 and Mako trying to get themselves into the front line. They're not tanky enough just yet. They will be insanely tanky. But you can see right there, damage coming through from NIP, more than enough to cut through that front line. And Jackie had teleported to get the red buff and then went mid lane. He wasn't there. He wasn't able to get there in the same kind of time frame. And NIP, there's a lot there. They now have a thousand odd gold lead. Second dragon being started up currently by Jackie Lovers. There are thousand and one traps and award by that banana bush just on the top edge of your screen dragon number two secures baron though on the other side could be a slight threat because see mako and 369 were very swift to walk up the river again you are into azira you have got to be aware of that ability to rapidly start up the big purple worm especially with the second item now completed this turret in mid lane should just fall as 369 Tanks up the turret shots. Teleport. teleport behind into the strangle thorns. Jorg into the back line with a double knock up as well. Jackie dead to rights. They're going to do so much damage. The 369 gets to charge away with the flash coming on down of the culling onto Mako. Solar flare is jumped over by Rookie, who is just started on the gunslinger. Is looking like Stephen King's Dark Tower hero. Rookie gets the damage done again, commits the flash this time, and now with two dead, NIP were just tentatively thinking about a Baron. They're not deciding anymore, though. They're going straight towards it. They have the Zyra. They can rush this out as quick as they want. Top Esports, they have themselves what? I mean, they don't even have a true shot barrage because he's dead. 369 will have to ult his way into something. Be a dream. 369 looking to come on through. It's a decent call of the Forge God. Turn around, comes on through Baron. Still leashed. They're going right back on in. They burned so much of the combo. Shanji has the Sterax popped. Down to 2000 HP. Cream kills off the Renekton. Big game hunting. That's the Baron down. True shot barrage across so many members of 369. Desperately low, but not dead somehow, some way. Votic gets the last auto. Mako looking for a Zenith Blade across the wall. It goes wide as Aki's still here. Trying to buy as much space as he can. And Rookie somewhere in the back end of that fight did fall. But NIP get Baron. NIP get a load of kills. And NIP are now the ones in control of the game. Yeah, the yeah. NIP just about scrap their way through to a Baron and a one team fight. They get themselves, again, an extension of that gold lead. And going back to the replay, this is exactly what happened after this. The root lands onto oh. Jack Love. Aki, who we've... We've criticized him a lot for his AP jungle play. He has a good team fight here. Gets himself the great uh, CC onto that first target. So that's one carry down. Tear Cream teleports in late as well. He can't commit damage to the start of this. And, you, know, you can't afford to get caught like that as Jackie Love. You can't afford to get caught like that. Um, as so much of the damage for this team. When it comes around to this Baron, there is this huge lineup for the, the Orn. But it doesn't quite catch everyone in terms of that Brettle proc. Very, very close to being turned around. Cream, he's the only remaining damage at this point. Tien, he's soloed out because they don't want to... Uh, see him get that power of steel, of course, and Rookie gets that one. Rookie really, really doing well Whoa. at trying to get himself the damage down, but Cream just about makes this salvageable there. Very, very close to getting another one back. I wonder what happened. I think he flashed off the bottom edge of the screen. The observers caught a little bit guy surprised because 369 on the top side was doing things at the same time. Don't blame him for that one. Trinity Fusion upgraded there for Jackie Love as the Orn upgrades will still keep coming on through, and that will help mitigate some of this gold lead, assuming the Baron power play isn't. Absolutely overwhelming. Still a game to be played here. So NIP, they have themselves a good lead, a good chance to extend that lead. They can't overextend. Remember that they've used a lot of their tools in that last fight. Wouldn't surprise me if they don't have uh, many of their flashes up, as we'll see when that uh, graphic on the side goes, uh, yeah, goes <laughs> folds back in. But you know, when you do have um, you know, the big call of the Forge God. There's every chance that you could catch out someone like Rookie. Of course, Photic, Aki, and Shenji all having their flash, though. There's more flashes than I would have predicted being up. Yeah. That does give them a degree of safety. And Top Esports, they're up against it now. Particularly with so many items coming through. Rookie getting towards Armor Pen as well. Oh. So he can chunk through that front line like this. I thought that the front line would be so much stronger from Top Esports. But with the gold now being given over to that Lucian, that might just not be the case. Especially with mixed damage coming in from Aki and Photic. Rookie is still one of the very best in the world. Even if NIP have been struggling, I think it's fair to say he has been uh, putting in some shifts. <laughs>
Well, it, Rookie is such a strange person to characterize. In spring, I think he was. In summer, I think he's taken a dip in form. I think he has done. You can see some of his games where he's not been able to carry the way he would have liked to. He might have to do so again here. Oh, my days. Damage back. Shanti goes to the back line. Damage comes through across the back end of it. And hmm. everyone stays yeah. alive. Yeah, I think the whole conversation about NIP is about how they, as a team, have struggled to make anyone look good. Because Rookie has had some fantastic moments where he jumped out of Fog of War. He's also had some where he's just not carried games where he should have done. There have been series this split, in the in the 0-5 that they've had, where Rookie could have carried and didn't. I think against Xiaohu, against Weibo, he was the second best mid laner. Xiaohu ended up beating him mm. down. And, you know, there were that series for R sure. Rookie, yeah. Rookie is not 2020 Rookie. He is 2024 Rookie, which is a different beast where he can still very much carry, but he's not necessarily the 1v9 machine that can carry any team to any kind of result. I think, I think part of that as well, though, is, is that Aki has continued to dip for me as well. Um, and I think he's... He, you could argue that for most of the team. Yeah, I know, but, but I think that's really hurt Rookie in particular, who, who has often been playing more isolated than you'd think. And I, I do sometimes think that players get criticized for playing 1v1 scenarios without the kind of information and pressure from the rest of the map that you come to expect at a certain level yeah. of pro play. And that, that will always hurt the on-screen form, so to speak. And um, I gotta see whether uh, we get ourselves uh, an NIP versus BLG matchup uh, still left. We do because then we get oh, to see ourselves the battle of the chess piece mid laners again. We have the knight versus the rook. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can bring back pawn from EDG as well, and uh, where he can come back in. Did we uh, ever have a king? I suppose there's Faker. And uh, with those king, who was um, an OC player. OC player. Of course he was. Yeah, yeah, they, Carrie, yeah. They he was on Cloud Nine Academy for a bit. Then they, then they went over to um, to, to to NA for a bit. Uh -huh, so yeah, we've yeah. got that. So we've got we have. Quite a lot of those pieces racked up, and uh, see whether we have a bishop. <laughs> imagine if you had like an ordained league. Of... Count? Imagine if you had, imagine if you had an ordained League of Legends player where they're just like midway through, they start giving a sermon and all shit. <laughs> we don't, we don't have a queen, do we? I mean, shocks, are shocks. Just, well, yeah, yeah of course. You know. <laughs> I think that one, that, it. one, that one explains itself. So. <laughs> well, there we go, uh, Shanji. Farming up here, I was a bit worried about this for Renekton in terms of like, oh my days, only 400 gold ahead of the all, and that could prove problematic, but um, now... Oh, he's overpushed here. Yeah, 369 could be in danger. True Shot Barrage chunks out Fodic, but there comes wow. the Mega Inferno Bomb. A lot of damage now coming on through, but the turnaround could be pretty scary. Fodic flashes away from that Call of the Forge God coming careening towards his face. Cream down at 20% HP as well, though means it could be a little difficult to hold this tower in the way they were hoping. That is uh, a little snapshot of how the game could look in a few minutes if NIP don't accelerate this game or, or like, again, put Top Esports into a position where they can't uh, rely on their front line. Orn just took up, what, three ultimates or something yep. like that throughout that whole play, and he still survived. He burns his flash, yes, but it is still a worthwhile trade. Doesn't die, and you can see how tanky this guy is going to be. He gets tanky with every item that he upgrades for his teammates as well, something like 10% of his defensive stats coming through. So that's going to be a problem for NIP, especially when Rookie wasn't at the play. They could not damage their Orn to the level that they wanted. Rookie had that teleport, chose not to commit it. I'm sure he will be able to kill tanks very effectively with that. Lord Dominic's regards with so much armor pen on it nowadays. Doesn't give that giant slayer passive for uh, hitting targets with more HP than you, but it does give you um, so much armor pen. So yeah. top is what will still need to be very, very careful. Rookie is the person which breaks your front line. He has been playing a stellar game so far. He's a bit afraid of a potential all in here. Mako with a flash and a Zenith Blade could prove scary. Rookie holding on for now. Flashes in response to the flash Zenith Blade from Mako. Yeah, that's not great for NIP because if Rookie needs to be the one killing your front line and he's core to your damage, what happens when he doesn't have that flash? What happens the next time that someone does find a good engage onto him? It'll be really, really difficult. He'll have to play with his E much more conservatively now at this point, looking towards what looks like a rapid fire cannon coming after this too, mm. so he can get himself uh, that real good long range auto to start things off and keep things moving. NIP, they have, again, significant gold lead, but not unbeatable. It's only 3k, it's 30 minutes in. Next time we look for a fight, the front line of top east, what is going to be very, very potent. The Andres Muramana both upgraded now for Cream and TM by the Orn as well, and we're in a very Ooh. interesting perspective, or um, <coughs> position rather, where top esports now potentially stat-wise outvaluing a lot of NIP. It's about thousand gold per item upgraders. That's four thousand, which means that NIP, yes, they have that gold lead, and that's very worth putting out because I think multiple times when you have champions which are early game champions, or you have champions which are late game champions, or add value like this, gold is decorative at to a certain point. If it's close enough, then you start looking about how the champions interact and. We start looking where the gold leads are. It's split on NIP. It's not necessarily blown out of proportion across any one role, though, which means that you don't have someone like, you know, the Ziggs, which is one-shotting people. He calls rookies very strong.
strong, but he's, uh, you know, he if he had, you know, a 2,000 gold lead instead of a 1,000 gold lead, and he had that rapid fire cannon, maybe that would be a difference, because he'd be at his item a little earlier. And of course, with that gold lead on the Renekton, and that means less and less as the game goes on, as Cream might just be able to show here. Oh boy, Shanji in danger, we'll get a decent chunk here onto Cream. Call the Forge Guard comes across, and Cream goes over the wall, teleport coming on in from Rookie. Bernard and Blaze, teleport and response will be burned, as we sort of noted there, but keep their top laner alive. Yeah, you can see that NIP, if they'd chosen to commit, so that was that longer. I mean, Mirko's here, Jackalope can follow oh, up, he has no cleanse. Oh boy, that's gonna be so much damage, Rookie's gonna die! Jackalope takes down his world championship mid lane teammate, the IG brothers, have a bit of a civil war. Top Esports send their regards. Rookie, the next uh, mid laner of Top Esports as well, goes down. He is this such an important player. Him dying, trying to play around that fog of war, might just lead to NIP giving up the Baron. Teleport to save his top lane and then walk back to try and get towards the rest of his team. Dies on the way. And he has no teleport. He's going to be gone for 30 seconds. A 4v5 will be the Dream Act. He has Flash. Maybe he can get to the pit and steal this, but I don't know whether they're going to be wanting to burn it. Gets into the pit, still goes down. Stranglethorns afterwards is solid. It's a five man knockup, but. There's no plants to be seen within there. Another member dies, and Top Esports right back in it. Top Esports, they pull ahead, really. It's even in gold, but it's decorative. You're still scaling. You're still getting those items for Top Esports. And NIP, their mid laner, who for so long has been their sole carry and rookie, is the person to make that mistake. This is the conversation about 2024 rookie. Spring was a great split from him. I think he was the second best mid laner in the entirety of the LPL. But you look here into Summer, and sometimes he just hasn't been able to pull off the magic, which we know he can do throughout his history. He's just not the same level of player, which sometimes could have done that 1v9. And sadly for him, that felt like the moment which he could have turned the game. Now the Baron buffs on. Now the scaling's come to fruition, and rookie, he can only, only stand here and watch. Draw, looking to go on forward. The quickness was popped and they just walk away from it. And Top Esports, they have found the chink in the armor. They smell blood in the water. And they are circling here in the dark, dark seas. Dangerous indeed is this team when they get an edge in a game. Yeah. Top Esports, so many items come through. Funny little thing which happened where uh, Cream has upgraded the Muramana, Jekyll has upgraded the Triforce. They have a bit of a difference on opinion or just didn't check their item slots. Yeah, whatever first thing yeah, was first slots. Slots. I was like, okay. Not really sure if Muramana is worth upgrading for the extra mana. You have enough there, buddy, but it still goes through into the extra scaling from that Muramana uh, Triforce, typically regarded as the, the better upgrade um, because of the, the variety of stats that it does give you. And uh, Rookie, what happened here? He goes, clears out a ward, but this bot side jungle is not your own. You made that play on bot side. If they didn't, this is the thing. If you wanted to make that play onto Cream but chose not to, surely you should have known that people were roaming over. Then just mm. by calling off the play, it doesn't mean that people aren't suddenly in that bot side. Dragon's now oh, started rookie. up. Rookie once again zeroed out. Jackie Love making sure that Rookie cannot get, have a clean team fight. Rookie, who should be the person determining this game for NIP, has not been able to fight. He could be in danger <laughs> here. Gets a wall put down on him. Doesn't get to reset. They have to give up the dragon. And that's not gonna, it's, at least it's not going to be Som, certainly that's whole point going over to top esports. But Rookie, he has not had a clean old game. Early game was great. The first couple of skirmishes, fantastic. Getting into the back line, getting into those carries, and showing that he had the damage. And suddenly top esports, they find themselves their tanky stats. Orn is now unkillable. I think probably Mako's near enough unkillable now, or to the point where you have to spend so much time doing it and use so many resources for mm. it that you've lost the fight anyway. This front to back is magnoxious as hell from top esports. NIP going to get themselves a, a siege. Uh, survival for now, but that is about it. And there's a more of Malmortius now to be for Jackie on top of the Bloodthirster yeah. as well. He's not exactly an easy target to get a hold of the best of times. <clears throat> yeah, he is so, so tanky at this point, of course. Even the, the shield comes out of AD. Rookie Ooh, gets stunned up. Days. That's a big chunk of cream, though. Will not fall down. The Strangle Thorns is solid. Rookie's still alive! Gets alive! Crypt Blue Healing comes on through. Top Esports dies to get Rookie, and it all goes wrong! They're gonna try and fight out the rest of this one. There's a teleport available from Shanji if they want to look for it. TM, though, and Jackie, still a threat. Photic not hit by the true shot barrage the tower falls despite the mess of a dive so it ends up being a little bit too far from top esports but they still get themselves the inhibitor turret jackal is still alive too so it's not really like nip can um like waltz around the map wherever they want top esports can't go into the base to take those inhibitors but those lanes are open top inhib down bottom and middle inhibitors exposed ready for the taking from top esports um this is a survival from nip this is not even necessarily a like a winning play cream doesn't get hit by that ultimate from photic photic's ults haven't 
been awesome this game. Mm. He's not really had the great ass accuracy on them, even though I think his Ziggs has typically been quite good in the summer and one of his better champions. It hasn't got the value which they wanted. Uh, Tian goes a little bit too deep here and uh, tanks up uh, Mini Macro as well, which could have been, uh, Tarag, which could have been a bit dangerous. He has a death cap now, by the way, though. Oh, wow. So um, if he ends up hitting that spear, um, expect someone's HP bar to evaporate. No magic resist really to be seen. There's a little bit of inventory for draw. That's about it. Everyone else <clears throat> going towards standard stats again. The problem with Renekton especially, he doesn't really build resists that freely. He's gone towards Asterix and a Shoujin, so no one here building all that much in the way of uh, defensive stats against magic damage. So between the Horizon Focus and a Death Cap, anybody gets tagged from a long-range spear, they will be taking unspeakable amounts of damage. And, uh, we now have the point where Orn has upgraded every item he can. Mako has an upgraded Warmogs, which means that he has a million HP, 4,000 almost. Shanji, um, sadly for him, as the sole gold lead, is showcasing why gold leads are sometimes decorative. This Renekton at level 18 is just Ooh. not valuable. Takes most of his HP, has the Shoujin and Black Cleaver. It's good damage combo, but it's not what's going to keep you alive versus this combo. Top esports, they do just stroll into the base, get themselves that um, second inhibitor down. They'll take another one. One minute 20 left on that yep. top side, sure. and the engage comes through. And the quickness isn't bad. They got a big old chunk. Turn with the Strangle Thorns is there, but the damage back is Foul Cream! Gets over the wall! The Corky Merchant delivers a wonderful deal for Top Esports, and LIP are ruining the day they decided to walk into his store. Absolute violence to be seen in NIP's rift. They will fall apart here in their own base, and Top East will surely get game one. If the Shy is the god of carries, and Zaius is the god of thunder, 369 is the god of peel, the Orn wins the team fight at the base, and Top Esports made to stumble, but not to fall. They just can't close it out. Rookie getting picked one time, it feels like turned everything around just enough. Baron goes down, the base breaks, and a game that was looking increasingly NIP favored, once again for NIP, falls apart in the latter stages. Every time I get to see 369 on tanks, every time I get to see him on something which can peel for his teammates, I am left in awe. Um, top Esports, they had a little bit of a stumble in the early game. Rookie tore them a bit of a new one when it came to those carries, um, but he couldn't finish it off. And it, towards the end of the game, it just became all about the front line. And folks, uh, welcome after, after an extended period of gameplay. We had two games back to back. We didn't even Hi. take ourselves a break. Sam, would you like to take a I break right really now? Like, I, actually, I actually dashed off mid game to go to the toilet. So I'm solo uh, cast for a bit. But, folks, um, what we are doing here is we are um, continuing to cover LPL games, which are not broadcast officially um, in the English language. There is, of course, a Chinese broadcast in the games are still um, happening, but we hope you're enjoying yourselves. We have done this every single day of summer on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays when there is no official English broadcast. We hope you're enjoying yourselves. If you are, drop a follow, drop a prime, drop a sub, drop a follow to my brother as well, Initialize, who is genuinely, yes, my brother. We are brothers that cast together. You will never get this anywhere else. No one else is... Um, doing official casts, casts like this like we are. We are turning our cams off and we're focusing solely on the players and on the gameplay, which means that you get to learn a bit more and, ex and experience a broadcast which is closer to the official broadcast. And we hope that you enjoy that. Um, and we've done that every single day. We have now covered over 150 games here on this channel, live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday while it's happening. We have this week, and I believe we have one week left after this before we are done with this for the year. Next week will be the last non-broadcast games on the English broadcast, so thank you so much for joining us throughout this journey. We're almost at 7,000 followers. We have over 500 subscribers. The support has been absolutely monumental. We're not doing this, um, you know, you know, we're, we're not getting paid to do this. We're doing this for your enjoyment. If you can support us in any way, it helps us keep what we're doing as well. You'll be able to catch me on the LPL official stream, and you'll be able to see that a lot, but <coughs> God, my voice is... Uh, Gonna look look forward to having a longer off season with them. God, so let's um have a look through this photo, get some good damage, but it's